there they go. Welcome back to RacingNews.com. I'm Magic, and today we're taking a closer look at a major barn heading on the Kentucky Derby Trail, the Todd Pletcher Barn. And with me to talk about the Todd is Mike Samich. Mike, a couple of weeks ago, literally just two weeks ago, we were sitting here going, this is Todd Pletcher's best stable since 2017 when he won the Derby with Always Dreaming and the Belmont with Taparit. And yet two weeks later, here we are just holding sand, sprinkling through our fingers here. Help me stop the spread. What's going on? It's a riches to rag story. It's the opposite of what you usually hear about or expect. I mean, you said it perfectly there. A couple of weeks ago, if I said you can have a trainer to bet, if we had odds on the trainers, right, you're getting tap it sub two to one. I mean, he's probably six to five, seven to five to be the derby winning trainer. You have three or four horses that, that we were excited about seeing next time out. that were going to come out and run huge. You got command performance who's sitting in the background. Emmanuel hadn't run back yet. You got charge it. I mean, you have just this, this stable of three-year-olds that we were all expecting to run big and one by one, they've checked themselves off the list. And now we're, we're down to like, Oh man, can Mo Donegal go up and win the wood? Like that's that's what we're left with here. And what command performance? Don't worry, he's coming back in a maiden special weight. I, I like we went from I don't know four of the top ten Derby contenders to maybe we can win a New York Prep and we have this horse who hasn't started yet this year. Amazing turnaround. Yeah, even you bring up command performance, a maiden who went to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile after finishing second to the early favorite for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, Jack Christopher, in the Champagne Stakes. And then he doesn't, he gets fourth there, but then we haven't seen him since then. And again, he's a maiden. There is nothing to guarantee that he's going to make the Kentucky Derby Trail. So it's a very curious situation, very precarious if you're a fan of the Toddster. Let's put a positive spin on it. He does have charge at aiming for the Florida Derby. Huge step from a maiden special weight to the Florida Derby, but we've seen horses that were even maidens that did okay in the Florida Derby and do well enough to not only make the Kentucky Derby gate, but make some impact on the Triple Crown Trail. So what do you think about Charge It? Uh, interesting horse. I mean, we, we all rushed to the claim box in the, in the three-year-old league to try and get this horse. is probably Todd's best chance now at a Derby. I mean, some people may argue Mo Donegal. We'll talk about him in a second here. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see what Charge It does. Is he going to go right to the lead? Are we going to see if he tries to wire this Florida Derby feared? We've already seen a ton of speed in the Derby, so I, I, you almost hope he doesn't do that because it may hurt his chances long term. But he's really the wild card now. I mean, you know, we heard about Emmanuel last year. We heard about Emmanuel last spring uh, about how much talent that horse had. And, and just wasn't able to show it in the fountain of youth. And I'm not sure if this is a big positive, a big show of confidence in charge it or a big wah, wah, when it comes to a manual that he's not in the Florida Derby. Cause I think we all expected charge it to go to Tampa running the Tampa Bay Derby and, and have a manual come back in the Florida Derby. And now you're kind of scratching your head a little bit. So we're going to send Mo Donegal to New York. We got charge it here in Florida. Like who's Todd's best three-year-old now. I, I, I think it's charge it, but I'm not, really positive anymore I, I like Emmanuel's in every top three list and now he's just out the door well and, and it's kind of a funny thing that you have Emmanuel pops up and oh he's the hot one and then oh Dean's list runs second at Gotham hey maybe he can do something command performance at uh, charge it everybody just kind of keeps coming back to Mo Donegal Ironworks American Ironworks. Icon. it's not like it was just these like it's amazing he's literally a 10 three-year-olds that were like yeah that could be the horse and now we're down to charge it. Who we've never seen in the stakes. Mo Donegal, who caught twelve post itis in a fever last weekend, so he doesn't end up running. And command performance, who's not broken his maiden yet. I mean, it's amazing that we went from there to here in in sub four weeks. Assuming he comes out of that uh, that scratch, okay, where he did have a, a light fever, according to Tal Pletcher. Uh, Mo Donegal going to the Wood Memorial. He's going to go. It's a hundred point prep race. He even if he hits the board, does it win, Mike? He's guaranteed a spot in the Kentucky Derby based off of points. And so, therefore, because of that, this looks like Fletcher's most likely Derby winner. He has a legion of fans. Give them something positive before you tear them back down. The pace will be fast. So, so his plotting ass will be able to try and run him down late. Like that's, <laughs> he, he makes his own trouble because he doesn't break very well. And when you feel the 20, you're really going to have to pass a lot of horses. He's going to be flying down the lane, right? It, it, the question is what trip is he going to get and whether or not that speed's going to come back to him at all. Because right now you, you see Forbidden Kingdom, you've got early voting, you've got Epicenter, you've got Charge It, all this speed that's signed up for the Derby that, that we presume will be in the Derby. I don't see anyone walking on the lead. I don't see anyone getting loose last year like we saw from uh, from Medina Spirit. And that means that you have a pressured early pace. That means those horses are going to have more struggle to hold on. And you want someone coming from the back or coming from mid-pack. That plays into Modonigal's hands. Um, it's all about the draw for him, though, man. You, you, like we saw, we saw last year with the Toddster getting that one post with a horse that wants to kind of come from off the pace a little bit. That completely ruined 
uh, that horse. I can't remember his freaking name, but I completely ruined his chances. No after being, there you go. No agenda. After being in Florida and being the wise guy horse, that post truck killed him because of his style. You need to draw in that four through 10 range here if you're Modonigo because you need to be able to get back early, kind of work in that mid pack trip, two, three wide, save some ground over one of both turns and not get shuffled on the rail. So that draw is going to be so important for Modonigo, but he should have the pace to chase in the Derby. One thing that's for sure, if the horses have any semblance of talent, Todd Pletcher will be able to get them into the Kentucky Derby. And also, Todd Pletcher has won uh, the Belmont Stakes several times as well. So it's not just the Kentucky Derby. He can do it in the Belmont. Mike, any final thoughts about Todd Pletcher? I, I know we've, we've kind of harped on Mo Donegal and, and the rest of the horses, but uh, one last final thought on Pletcher Stable. I would probably take command performance out of the three of them, as ironic as that sounds, uh, because it's like – Look, the horse was touted last year, didn't run very well in the in the Breeders' Cup, the Juvenile. But you're going to get that classic Todd three race progression here. They're going to run him in a, in a maiden special weight. They're going to run him in a stakes. They're going to run him in the Derby if he gets there. That is what he has been so successful with year over year is bringing these horses back. And the fact that like some people may look and say, oh, this is a huge negative. That we haven't seen command performance. I think it's kind of a show of faith, to be honest, that you believe that you can go maiden special weight, one stakes race into the Derby and have a shot. Um, and I have big question marks around Mo Donegal. The price right now for me is too short on charge it until we see him actually do something in the Florida Derby. So 40 to one command performance. If I was going to take one Toddster right now, that would be the one I would take. The one thing that he has above his stable mates, he hasn't disappointed us this year. Not yet. We'll no, see what happens. Hasn't let me down yet. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like the Breeders' Cup Juvenile is coming back as a bad race out of uh, no, the no, horses coming been. out of that one at all. If you want some more information on the Kentucky Derby, the Kentucky Derby Future Wager Pool 4 is running this Friday through Sunday. And Mike Samich and I have a video up breaking down the odds of the horses, not only in just that pair of mutual pool, but also fixed odds, both stateside. And if you're international, we've got you covered as well. So head over to youtube.com slash racing dudes. We've got you covered there along with the full coverage of the Derby and Oaks trails hit like, if you like the video, hit subscribe, if you really like it, tell us below what you think about the Todd Pletcher stable, who is Todd's best chance at a Derby winner this year. Let us know. And we'll see you this has been a presentation of racing dudes.com. Your destination for all things horse racing and sports betting. Whether you want free winners, expert insider picks, up-to-the-minute trackside weather reports, or podcasts and videos for bettors of all skill levels. Never make another wager without visiting the Racing Dudes first.